Welcome to the Collingwood Rant. I'm Sly. And I'm... We've got the power to win, Spook. <laughs> no fucking up in excess this time around. They'll never tear us apart, you know. Um, what did you think? First quarter was... What were you saying, for example, in messaging? <laughs> I, was, um, I was singing that um, song from the Titanic. So, you found the first quarter dreary, just a few broken pots like a museum tour that's not really worth the price of admission. <laughs> you can't please some people. No. But with about five, seven minutes remaining in that first quarter, we kicked a couple of goals. Yeah, no, it was a uh, sluggish start, and um, I do remember um, saying to you, I think we could be shit. And I do remember saying, I think it's probably the buy, and they're just a little bit scratchy. Well, one of us was wrong. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it was, um, I mean, I wasn't overly massively concerned. It was just, uh, just a passing thought. Uh, I didn't seriously <laughs> entertain it. You seem to have a lot of those lately. For, for long. No, it was just that, uh, that whole cushioning moment about, well, this could be, uh, this could be a bad outcome. Because at this stage, well, I think we were well and truly tracking for, well, uh, for 100 points point down, loss, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I had to go out um, uh, at the end of the first quarter, which is probably the catalyst for them um, coming yeah. good. Uh, the last ten minutes, just as I was leaving, actually, it was it was quite encouraging. Just I think the the, the form turned around enough, and we we started uh, we banged on a couple, and it was just like okay, well, that's probably a bit more of a, a gettable lead. I remember saying, um, and I texted a couple of the other boys that um, they had that, and I think it's one of the more accurate. Um, um, uh, not demographic statistic. I think it's a statistic. Well, I'll bet to tell you what it is. You can tell me what you think. Uh, that pressure graph thing that they put up, where it shows the corresponding. Uh, yeah, I think it's a pressure, pressure rating. Yeah, and, and I think Coxie sums it up in his podcast about saying anything over two hundred is good, anything below that is bad. Um, so they were up around two twenty odd or something. I think Port, and they were really hammering us for those that first twenty minutes. And um, I remember saying that I don't think they could keep that intensity up. For that, that's that's like the way that they were swarming on on anyone that the that, that was taking possession was surely going to have a bit of a um, an impact on them. You you can't sustain that type of pressure for four quarters. I thought if we can weather it enough, and then we counted a little bit, I felt better leaving. But uh, I was at my son's basketball game and I was refreshing the scores and they just kept going up like a, like a Yazoo song. Why don't you just look at the scoreboard? Why do you need to refresh the scores to see your your son's basketball scores? Oh, yeah, because they, they were getting beaten. Oh, so it was on the phone. Second quarter came alive thanks to one Will Hoskin Elliott. Didn't it? Yes. I <laughs> know no, he was good in that um, in that little patch. I think that was um, he was certainly a catalyst. I think for for some of the change. Um, he he was on the receiving end of that. Um, who snapped it in the in the first quarter? Hill. It was Hill. It was a was, like a terrible miss kick. I don't yeah. think uh, Hosky was. Uh, I don't think anyone was expecting him coming in that low and flat, but you know he took advantage of it and goal. But those those two telling marks and his his um, the second mark was really good. The yeah. first one was like marking practice. Yeah, um, jumping on the back of a um of a sack. Yeah, I know that first like that. I said it when that happened. The guy I was watching, if I go, it's effectively an uncontested mark because he's taken out the one guy who might have gone for it. And I'm not not bagging him for doing that, but just sort of saying he's gone up and there's been a little pack there, but he's the only one who's actually got hands to it. The second one I thought was a really good one because uh, that was done on the wing on Aaliyah because he it was a lot harder angle. You know, he had a lot bigger body in front of him. It was, it, it, he didn't have the, the easy, unimpeded run that he had. So I thought that second marker was really good. But he, he did some... He had a nice little patch of about 15 minutes there, which he just blitzed. Yeah, no, Which he, everyone he, has told me about. <laughs> it, um, I think mean, he did lift the, the side. It, the, 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 the intensity did change. After that, I think they just looked at him and said, well, if he can do it, what's stopping us? I know. I, mean, I, I get shit can for ripping into Will Hoskin. Look, like, I'm happy whenever our, any of our players do well. But I found that really interesting. Kane Corn said that um, oh, it's probably the best. If you, that's probably the best game he's played. If he's played a better one, I can't remember it. It's like, he's been around for eight years. So it took him eight years to play his best game. Yeah, I was surprised. I was looking at the stats and he's, he's 30 now. He just seems yeah. younger though. He's one of those... Uh, well, remember, he's in the 18 grand final, so that's six years again. He was at yeah, JWS for a couple of years. Do you know how Obelix fell into the yeah. magic potion as a kid and had long-lasting effects? Maybe he... I was about to say he fell into a vat of vanishing cream, but we can't now. Whether he fell into a vat of anti-aging cream, Hoskin Elliott. He looks very young. Well, um... Well, it's got any bearing on anything. It was just an observation. Oh, look, yeah. I'd... Do you find him attractive? <laughs> I, What's he doing on Saturday night? He's a pick four. 
So for a pick four, that's the sort of stuff I want to be seeing regularly. Not fucking once every eight weeks. Um, What'd you call him? What's your nickname for him? I was, well, someone said to me, yeah, because they quoted McRae. McRae said, he's like our Swiss army knife. We can play him anywhere. And I said, I call him Haley's Comet because he only comes out, makes an appearance once every 75 quarters. <laughs> and that's the thing. He's a pick four. He's a senior player. You know, I know he can sort of play back and forth, but he just disappears too often. And that's the fucking reality. I've been saying that since 2018. He doesn't get enough of the ball. Well, he's a role player, Sly. He's, he's not out there to, to Similarly, you. Lipinski, you know, four goals, great. Two of them were sort of gimmies, but, you know, great game. But, you know, I, I don't expect them to be starring every week, but I expect them to be doing more than they do at times, you know, because both of them just have a tendency to fucking vanish. But the club loved him. They love them both. I don't give a fuck what the club loves. This is the fucking problem with this club and its supporters. So let's just fucking rip into everyone <laughs> while we're doing it. You want to celebrate Husk and Elliot had 15 great minutes? Fantastic. But then you excuse by virtue of that celebration that he's done not a lot for the six weeks prior or whatever. Um, same with Lipinski. I remember someone said last year, I'll take apologies for Pat Lipinski now, because he had one good game after nine bad ones. You want to fucking celebrate mediocrity and excuse it, and it's, you know, and then when they have that good performance, celebrate as the standard. It's not. That's the exception. You've got to make that the fucking rule. And as long as you keep celebrating the exception, that's going to be what's going to always hold this club back. And similarly, that's the same thing with the flags. Everyone celebrates the exception. You fucking lift people to that standard and keep them aspiring to that standard. I know we're not going to win flags every year. You know, I've you heard that's impossible. It. You can't do it every year. Yeah. Can't be done. But why, why even bother trying? What I don't want to fucking see is what this club does is they success unravels them because they everyone starts drinking the fucking bath water. Yeah, I agree on that one. And then it's like, oh, well, how great are we? And they keep celebrating it while everything's sinking. Well, we're back though now. We're back. We're well, officially back. Everyone's saying we're back. Well, do you think we're back? Uh, no, I want to see a little bit more yet before I, I think we're back. I want to see what, what happened on the weekend over the next couple of months. Maybe not necessarily the same level of execution, but I want to see consistent improvement building up to that, that, that those top of dominant performances. I wouldn't mind a couple of them in between. I'd be happy. I'm not going to push them back and say, no, I think you made a mistake. But uh, we'll see. We'll see how the next few weeks unfold. At the moment, it's, 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 the signs are promising. Yeah. I'll... They've been getting better. Yeah. I mean, the that Hawthorne game was an absolute fuck, that second half, because they just really went to sleep. Um, and I don't give a fuck what the, the you know people going ah oh, Hawthorne's a problem side the second last team's a problem side fucking hell really you using that as a <laughs> fucking excuse that is the problem that is the fucking problem you know so this is really gratifying and there was a little lapse in the last quarter where Port got to within about four goals or yeah. just under and that was a little bit concerning too it was like you're not going to do this again you know and it was great that they actually kicked a couple of goals and just silenced it I mean ultimately we probably could have won that game by 13 goals. They were inspired, you know, by um, that big rundown that Bo McCreary um, executed. We, I think we were at 23 up and they were streaming yeah. forward and uh, that's it. I think we kicked a couple after that. I didn't see um, I didn't see Hoskin Elliott at that point. Well, I, didn't, I, I don't remember seeing him that much in the second half. Well, I referenced 15 minute patch because he was great in that second quarter for about 15 minutes and then he wasn't really there. Um, Did the Swiss Army knife get put away? Potentially, or maybe it wasn't a Swiss situation anymore. Hmm. Darcy Moore, second half. Oh, no, I actually um, got a bit excited then. Uh, he's, um, I reckon last week he started to sort of show a little bit more, going from a few more contested during the grabs bye. and stuff. Oh, sorry, the week before. No, no, I think um, he was good during the buy too. That's probably why he got to <laughs> go for a few more. He took a lot of contested marks at training yeah. over uh, over the Will Hoskin Elliott travel bag. I mean, so actually, sort of just to jump back, I mean, uh, McRae said in his press conference that, you know, that the, the short breaks do actually impact you because you don't have time to recover, you don't have time to train and all that goes. And this time you notice Monday with, after the bye they had a bit of a spring in their step apparently in the first quarter you said they were awake that was a good start of yeah. training they were, yeah. they were awake and I did watch um, you know I always forget his first name Hinkley's press conference Ross, Ross Hinkley Ralph, 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 Ralph Hinkley. Hinkley yeah that's that's the one I always think of or the one who took a shot at Reagan. is it Ken Ken Hinkley yeah I think it's Ken Uncle Ken and pleasingly he gave a lot of credit to Collingwood did he yeah well so, that means Caro will leave him alone yeah. for the week yeah. so but it was interesting because obviously that contributes to, you know, because um, dogs smashed and killed her on Thursday. Did they? And Saints were coming oh, off. Oh, good a, on them. Saints came off a five-day break and a six-day break. And I remember you pointed out after Melbourne lost to Brisbane, and Melbourne was coming off a short break, and Colin was coming off short breaks when we lost us and killed her. It's like, good fixturing AFL. Why would you want a good spectacle? Why didn't, and 
this is what actually kills me with the fucking AFL is they go sorry this is a tangent but they run around Alice impose um, caps on rotations in the bench you know let's bring subs in this is for the players own good we don't want soft tissue injuries except when we get them to play three games in 12 days then fuck it all bets are off it's, fuck it um, what a prick of an organisation it's been a bit of a clusterfuck these opening six rounds oh, it's the, the most ridiculous it thing ever it is which means that they will absolutely without a doubt double down on it next year yeah so we're talking about Darcy Moore went through his marks yeah no he was, uh, he was impacted a, a lot more of the contests I think this week which was which is good took a few more contested grabs started to look a little bit more like he's his old self. Which yeah, he had a bit is, of spring. Is, yeah. yeah, that bit of liveliness. He gave him quite a pep talk. You know, I wonder how much Frampton's helped out. Like, that, you know, he feels like, hey, um, Framers is here to hold the fort. I can go roam a little bit. Well, I did see that a um, couple of times when um, when he was looking away that Framers just kept putting a red wig on <laughs> just to make him feel like uh, his old friend was back there. Old Murph. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go to Murphy later. Uh, Jordan the Goey. He was very good. Oh, that's a fantastic game. Mm-hmm. Nick Day got second half, first half. He was very quiet. Uh, yeah, he was, but he really exploded in the um, in the in the second half. I I love that um, that talk that he did. Um, yeah, that went. Um, I think at the moment it's down to about ninety meters and increasing. Apparently, it's still going some yeah. in some places of the world. It's still traveling, but yeah, it just it was beautifully weighted. It, it hit that space and then come off, and I think it spilt the coxie coxie. Knocked it over to Hill and Hill tapped it on. I think it was. Well, well Hill said, "Coxie, you go after it. I'll rove you." So I think like that kick travelled about eight hundred and forty-eight kilometres to get there, and then spent about twenty-eight possessions to go three feet into the goals. We came all the way from Macedonia. It did. Yeah, I mean, Coxie's another one you talk about there. Steve Miller song. Sorry, didn't he get blown up by the US military or something? Who's that? Steve Miller. Steve Miller did he? Did he? No, I don't know. Um, Mason Cox. Oh, really good, really good, really good. And obviously, you've got to talk about. Brad. I think that's uh, probably his best game since that uh, prelim where we stopped Richmond from winning four in a row. <laughs> did you know that we stopped Richmond from winning four four in a row in a prelim? No, I didn't know that. No, oh, didn't you? You we, should look it up one day. I do know we stopped Brisbane from winning one in a row. <laughs> Finally. Yep. Uh, Hill. Uh, yeah, he's uh, king of the assists. How many have about ninety? He had yeah, about five assists. I think he was assisting Port there with a while. Just I mean, some I, I think. Advice. He- did that guy over there tap the door? I think he had four that were converted, but then there was a couple. Like, he gave one to Schultz who missed everything. And I think he gave one to side bottom who missed everything. No, sorry, Schultz kicked the point from 10 metres out on a bit of an angle. And there was one with um, side bottom where I think he tried to snap it and miss. So, like, there was a couple that didn't pay off. Uh, but that was... He, he just did as he wanted in that game. He really, you know, he got a couple of goals, but he, uh, he set up so many others... And it probably helped with our forward line in terms of, you know, like Port would have been really worried about him and some other players would have been able to slip under the guard. Not Lockie Schultz, so who was really average except for one good mark. I can't believe how much you hate him every week. He's, he's your new Hoskin Elliott. As I said, I mean, I'm happy for anyone when they play well, but honestly, if Schultz wasn't a high-profile recruit... He only cost us 74 first-rounders. <laughs> I actually found it funny going back a little bit. Like, after we lost us and killed the game, Schultz did that really nice smother. And then I noticed the social media was all about his pressure and his tackling and shit like that. It was the biggest <laughs> fucking... <laughs> we, 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 we've got to come up with something. Yeah. The biggest PR job. How's his hairstyle job. this week? He, no, he's, he's, <laughs> look, he's been terrible the whole year. Now, great, he might be fitting into the style and that sort of shit. But Which I he, think that's a lot to do with it. But if he wasn't a high profile recruit, would they be playing him? Or would they drop uh, him? Not only his present output and form, I think, but then again... You look at uh, what's going on in the VFL, it's hard to see who's going to come in and uh, replace half these guys at the moment. Yeah, we'll talk but about we'll that. we'll cover that later, I'm yeah, sure. We'll, yeah. we'll cover that later. Yeah. I look, I'd, I'd like to see him do well, but just right now, he really looks lost. Yeah, I'm not concerned. What's he? He's, he's kicked about eight or nine or something. He's up in the top five goal scorers. Well, so that's in enough. In the league? That's enough. Is he kicked eight or nine? Yeah, I think so. It's a fair few. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I think so. We, we should look it up one day and actually be accurate with these things. Oh, we should. need a statistician. He's kicked 89. He's kicked 89, I reckon. Eight or nine. No, there's eight no or nine. There's eight no way he's nine. Kicked... Well, it's hard to split them. There's no way he's kicked eight or nine. I reckon he has. No, I think it's about six or seven or eight. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe somewhere between one and five. Six, seven, and yeah, then eight. I think that would be closer. No, I did see something on eBay and W that he was he was up in the top three or four or something. So which they're yeah. all they're all they're all log jammed up there. There's not much between them. Yeah, but until 
Saturday we fucking only kicked like 40 points a game so apparently that Bobby Hill said there's a couple of asterisks next to a few of them he reckons I'm going to look that up later and I just I'd be surprised but I mean the he got he took a really nice mark but then there was one handoff where Hill said to McCurry no no I'm going to handle it to you you're the logical person to handball it to you should get it because you're running right into the goal I'll give it to Schultze to, to bring him into the game yeah, he went yoink at the yoink. time and he went yoink yep yeah. yep yeah. What else uh, you got? What else you got for us? What else have I got? Mm. Not much written down here today. No, nah, there's not. It's like a went. white rabbit in a snowstorm yeah. there. Framers, Framers watch. Um, he didn't. The thing is, I think with defenders is they don't necessarily always have to stand out a lot. I don't remember him doing anything spectacular, which probably means he was solid at the job. Who who was he holding? Because they were down a couple of forwards. Oh, he would have been Dixon, a marshal at points. Yeah. And then um, Dixon wasn't there. No, and... he wasn't there. But they, they, I think they were a couple of... There's other tall, young... That like Georgie Artis. Yeah. Um, Warren Treadray. Yeah, Treadray wasn't there. Treadray. I didn't see it. I think that's how well Framers kept him well. Greg Phillips. Greg Phillips. Phillips. Yeah, yeah, Framers took care of him yeah. too. Yeah. Was he wearing the red wig at the time? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on back there. Um, because it's like watching traffic lights change. Yeah. I actually like how... He's got a lot of mongrel in him. He seems to sort of yeah, I like get really that. upset when, like... I can't remember who it was, which Port player was giving him shit on the boundary. Oh, that was the one, actually. It was right in the pocket, as Gary pointed out, too, because I remember I cried out to it when it happened, where fucking he just got blocked out of the marking contest. Oh, yeah, the, uh, yeah. And he got really pissed off. The, um, good umpiring. The 2018 grand final repeat moment. Yeah. Allegedly, because I've had that eradicated from my brain. Apparently you haven't, because you brought it up. Who? You did. Who did? Maybe you need to refresh your phone so you can get your son's basketball scores again. <laughs> Have I mentioned the red wig that uh, Framers wears? No, you haven't. From Murphy. From Murphy, he's calling himself. Uh, some of the intel, like, I don't know if we can mention names, but you know, like internally they feel like they're starting to rediscover their mojo, their energy, and all that sort of stuff. Are you concerned that, as you just mentioned about the VFL, there doesn't seem to be a lot coming up? Uh, it um, is a little bit concerned. I watched a little bit of the Coburg game the other day and there was what? nobody setting the world on fire. Well, Ash Coburg, took one nice mark. Coburg hadn't won a game, I think, for two years until they met the might of the Collingwood VFL side. Yeah, Will Parker played, so... Uh, yeah, there's a fair bit of excitement around here. Like, there's certain players in there that I want to see get their shots this year. Who? And, um, Name them. Like um, uh, Ed... Kerno, what's his name? Ed, Ed Allen. Ed, Ed, Ed Allen. Um, Finn McRae, I think he's probably due for a chance. He's uh, he's unlucky to get called up, not to get called up I for, for, more get than, for more than three minutes. Um, I, you want to see some of them like banging on the door a little bit. Now, I, mean, I think with each week we lament the fact that um, it's Dad's Army out there and they're, they're clearly getting the job done now, but I don't think you can run the whole year with, with Dad's Army. You're already seeing um, side bottom and... Um, and um, Pendles being uh, managed for for time and all that sort of thing, but you think it's a look. You're almost robbing Peter to pay Paul with some of them. You're getting the output out of them to, to put you in position to win games, but you're robbing the development robbing. of you know, like because what 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 did Reef McGinnis have? Ten minutes? What was the fucking point? Yeah, well, I, we're talking about this. I think because Port were coming in that last quarter, I think McRae really held off on the the sub. Yeah, and. And finally went for it. I think he's probably a little bit worried after what happened with Hawthorne too. So he didn't want to change anything up. I mean, there's a few players I, I thought they probably could have taken the side bottom off. Um, I thought the Schultz was another one that probably could have gone. Well, you would have thought Pendles after the rib thing would have been the one that was targeted. But that's the one. But like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they sort of kept him out there as a stabilising the, influence. Well, that's uh, the leadership, I think. The, but, you, you can't understand what, what he does out there in terms of... Uh, but that's he, but that's also an indictment on the side that, you know, you need that 38-year-old guy to provide leadership when you do have a captain out there in the leadership group and you have senior players. That one of them should just be going, hey, they're coming back. Let's do something. Um, so yeah, I keep f- going Murph let's go get him Murph come on yeah. so I, th- that's I think something you know they talk about like um, 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 you know playing a pretty simple game and all that sort of shit you look at like that Hawthorne comeback all you had to do was really control it for a few minutes and just take the fight out of them which I think we did out of port like they got a few and it was like oh, shit, this, this I wasn't actually worried I thought it would stabilise but I thought they actually might get another one and then there might be a little bit of panic so that's a little bit frustration because during those times you just like them to actually take 
the gusto out of the opposition's momentum. Yeah, I mean, I, I did talk to you about this. I, I um, did you? Yeah, on the way back from uh, from the B ball, um, I listened to it uh, the last quarter of uh, I don't know about the first half of the last quarter on the on the wireless, and um, BT was ripping into Port's lack of interest of, of looking like they wanted to be out there. There was um, there was no life. He reckons he kept you know ripping into him about. I think they when they finally kicked the goal, there was no celebration. They running over the player. You know you've obviously worked hard for that moment. There was just nothing, and just about how much they looked flat, um, considering how well they started. You know, we, I don't think we demoralised them or anything like that. It was just uh, no, we did. Yeah, it was an interesting contrast. But yeah, you, 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 with that in mind, listening to that, you sort of like from my perspective, I didn't feel like if they had a late charge, they were going to capitalise on it because they just didn't have that. You know how sometimes just yeah. the whole side will lift and switch back on when it's down? It just didn't look like they were going to get out of that, that gear that they were stuck in, even though they sort of gave it a little bit of a shake there for a while. We, we rolled it back. What did we end up winning by 42 points or something yeah. there? Yeah, it was, so. a, it was pretty much a 12-goal turnaround, mm. which is, you know, we beat them by 12 goals last year. Um, it's, it's proven they're flat-track bullies. I mean, they really haven't taken think, big scalps. Do you think we're a problem side for them? Like Hawthorne is for us. <laughs> um, Do you think that's the way the, the competition works? No. You're not really playing sides. You're playing other problems. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I look at like the side, our scent, the fuck's poor, I don't care. I look at Collingwood and think, okay, outside of Ginnivan, you've swapped Ginnivan for Schultz. Now, is that providing enough improvement to go again to a flag? Um, not that you wouldn't say at this stage... It's, and, it's, but I mean, even if you sort of... It's a little bit of icing. Yeah, even if he gets to the point where he was at Fremantle where he had like 90 tackles in the season, you know, it, it's is that enough in itself? Because generally I think you need some improvement from different areas. Now, guys like Nick Dacos are probably still going to get better. He was really good second half, but he still looks like a little bit quiet at times. I don't know what that's about, but... Um, Third year blues, he reckons. Guys like Sidebottom and Pendlebury, they're not going to be improving at this stage. And by the looks of it, at this moment, they look like they've fallen back a step. Now, where they are is still probably better than a lot of options, but in terms of reproducing the standard that we had last year, then you need certain metrics to be met. So where else is that improvement coming from? Like, my check's, my check's not going to get better. No. Uh, you know, there's guys like Elliot and that aren't going to get better. So the goey... You know, he was good last year for most of the year, but again, is he going to get better than what he was? So you would really want an injection of some quality from other sources, and it's like, where is that going to come from? I don't know, you know, uh, you look at, like, the reserves, Harrison, but again, he's a small forward. Is that the one you're expecting? Yeah. Is it really going to be the difference? Carmichael's not really knocking the door down Well, anymore. Carmichael's an interesting one, too, because it wasn't this week, but last week when I was... Um, who the fuck would play? We played Carlton. Carmichael was at full forward, from what I could see on television. So you've recruited him as a mid, and he's playing full forward because you haven't recruited any other key position players. That was really disappointing because then you're looking like, okay, you've recruited 112 flankers and on ballers. They're not going to develop properly because there's now a surplus for positions. So you're going to have to play them in positions that they're not good at. And they're not really going to develop into like it's not like Carmichael will suddenly become a full forward. And it's like that McInnes. McInnes is a midfielder, but they're playing him as a key position four because he's got the height. So you're actually creating a situation where you're not going to get the best out of them because you're not playing him in positions that they can thrive in. So And you got some like um oh, I'm gonna get his name wrong, is it Jude Twice? Joe Joe what's his name? Yeah. JT, JT. Yeah. He looks silk. But he's a stick insect. He's too thin. So, so you, you, you throw him to the, the wolves now, he'll be smashed. Yeah. He'll just shatter. He'll be like fragments. He'll be like pickup sticks in the middle of a, a stick of jelly night if he's impacted. But he needs to. He needs a, probably a year or two to build up um, some muscles. But he does look good. Now, if you look at them going, okay, well, I can see why, why you picked him and B, that there's probably um, some upside coming out of it now. But there's a few of them, that just uh, the others. And I'm not, look, looking at the VFL all the time, there's a few of them just, performances just don't look like they're putting in enough to want to get selected. Yeah. I mean, the other thing... You I'm sure they are, but... Um, I mean, just... the, the one thing with VFL, because of that standard too, I think there's certain players it probably doesn't bring the best out of because you do need to be part of a much better system. But you'd really hope that one of them was banging down the door, you know. I mean, you know, when you... 
when you used to send sort of like you know the really good players down there, they just would monster that league. And McRae, mm-hmm. Finley McRae is the only one. Other one who's done it, but. I think now a number of people are questioning whether he can do it at AFL level or whether just we're not giving him the opportunity to do so. Well, it's probably a bit of both, but it's looking looking iffy. Yeah, I mean, like, it's the sort of thing that without risking our win-loss ratio, you wouldn't mind someone like a Mitchell getting a hamstring for four weeks and then McRae, the coach, saying to McRae, the player, you got four weeks of this. Right. you know, And if you play well enough, you're going to lock him out of the side. But I mean, as you've brought up, it, it feels like um, Craig McRae has a reliance on the senior bodies yeah, and a so reluctance to really... So in terms of are we good enough to go again, you've got to also measure up, well, who are the other teams up there? So like Carlton's doing well at the moment. Uh, they've got like half the list missing, missing, but I think the only one they're really missing out of that group is Doherty. It's not like they're losing Walsh and Cripps and Colonel and all that sort of stuff. Um, GWS has been good and Sydney have been good. GWS has been good, but they really haven't played. No, anyway. that's right. I mean, that's, so you brought it, up it, that point of... At this stage, you're over-inflating some of these positions. Yeah, I, the one thing with GWS, though, is that the way they finished the season last year, they actually did look pretty good well, side. That's, that, that's it. And, yeah, they're doing what they need to do, which is just go out there and get wins. Yeah, I mean, you but did they, bring up the point that bloody... These other clubs that finished final four last year they've had really easy draws yeah that's a that's a baffling one I mean in some respects it's probably not a bad thing to, to face a few hard sides up front rather than just have that easy run in but it's almost like they're structuring that they want certain sides to, to yeah. be playing finals this year Jeez, yes yeah I feel is that manipulative oh, I wouldn't have thought so nah. uh, just any moving away from the game for a second alright I'll go over here talking about Nathan Murphy um, I mean, not really a surprise. He couldn't get it back out there this year at all. And his concussion profile last year, oh, what did he get, like about three different concussions? Uh, yeah, which uh, in, in every minute. But he had some twats in the media say, like I remember someone, I won't mention who it was, that saying... Would it be a, a big buffoon? Yeah. The, the, it was, An enormous buffoon. I don't think it would, would it be the King Kong of buffoons? I don't think it was him, I think it was another one. But there was a... But after the St Kilda game last year where that Kevin Eady hit him and they said, oh, he staged, Murphy staged. and He went off with concussion protocol and he didn't play the following week. Was there an apology at all this week? No, but that was like, you know, given what's happened with him this year, you think if you were a twat in the media saying, well, he staged. And I know, like, because we put it up on Twitter or X or whatever, people go, oh, he does die. I'm talking, I'm talking about the fucking, you know, the actual concussions because it's like, like Rioli hit him, slapped him but it really seemed to rock him. So he seemed like any blow to the head really shook him quite a bit. And obviously, yes, men would come back this year. Really big loss to the side and the side structure. You know, you look at him, I remember when we drafted him, we drafted Stevenson at pick six, I think it was, and then Murphy was like pick 30 and eight or 35 or something. And they said they were surprised that Murphy survived that long because they were tossing up with pick six whether to take Stevenson or Murphy. Uh, And Murphy's the one who proved to be the much better player. I mean, Stevenson got dropped from North. Is there been a bigger fall from Grace? That's massive. Probably. Anyway. But, uh, yeah. But this is not the North Melbourne rant. Isn't it? Fuck. Could you... Do I have to buy another scarf? I've got some blue paint in the, in the car. No. So, but, so Murphy, you mean... Paint paper? How do you feel about his retirement? Uh, look, I'm disappointed. I, I probably, in my heart of hearts, hoped he was going to find some way to get back out there because he is crucial but I'm fairly comfortable with the role Framers is doing so it takes the edge off a little bit if you know what I mean yeah. like I'm gutted for him I think it's you know it's way too young and he's put all that work in and 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 whatnot but um like as he said in the in the interviews this week it's essentially I think it's easier when that decision's made for you than to risk going out there and you've got to think of your long-term quality of life and all that sort of thing yeah you just you know two more hits and you could be a, oh, just a dribbler way. for the rest of your life it, it's it's not worth the risk. You know, you've got Angus Brayshaw and all that sort of thing. Probably years ago, these guys would have just kept playing on and, and um, grown old and hosted their own podcast or something <laughs> as a as a sign that their intelligence levels were plummeting. Um, but yeah, it's 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 sad, um, but um, I think it's ultimately the best thing for him. Oh, definitely. You put your health before a game. His last game was the flag. Yeah. So you take that, wouldn't you? You go to high, I'd take it. Would yeah, you take, take it? I'd take, take it. I'm taking yeah. it. Uh, let me ask you some... Where am I taking it to? <laughs> let me ask you some other stuff. Charlie Cameron, sling tackle on lever cleared because he's got of a good character. 
Wasn't he rubbed out this week? Uh, no, I'm talking about the one last week against Melbourne. Was he rubbed out for something yeah, else? No, wasn't he rubbed out for this game? I didn't see him out oh, there. I can't at all wasn't, he, wasn't he cleared because he has, is of good character? <laughs> yeah. Uh, do we do we talk about this? Yeah, it's, why not? It's go for dangerous, it. dangerous territory. I'm not saying anything. I just I think it's fucking ridiculous that I mean he's got like about six offences fines for rough conduct. Yeah. So the good character thing's bullshit. Yeah. What, since when does good character come into any hearing? Well, it does now. So, because I mean, you've set a precedent for the rest of the competition. Well, as your friend Eddie Maguire said on Footy Classified, well, we'll just trot out that the Collingwood players do charity so, work and shit. So kitchens. Yeah. All you got to do is, there's plenty of footage of it. If, if, if that now gets you off these uh, heinous acts, um, oh, the guy think he deserved a week and he shouldn't have got rubbed out. But anyway, he served his penance out in the ground. <laughs> I guess. Rubbed himself out out there. No, I just, I, I've, this is the pro, you know, I, I've said it every week for fucking about 98 years. Why don't you say it again? The AFL's a shit organisation. How they can make these... <sighs> Arbitrary decisions. These contradictions. So then everyone goes, well, we don't get it. You know, we don't get what's what. Um, the Toby Green one, the bumper, or oh, he's gone for the mark, but then turned into a bump on Boyd from Carlton. Did you see that? Yeah, that was pretty, um, I thought he might have got a couple of weeks for that, but he ended up with one. But that's another one where, like, I mean, Nephew Lloyd said it. He said there was a situation years ago where he was running into a contest with Chris Judd and he was going to take Judd out, but then he realised, I can't do that. So he didn't curl himself into the bump. He just ran straight into Judd and they both conc- well, they concussed each other. And Lloyd's going, well, that's pretty much all you can do now. You have to follow through with the original action, even though it might totally clean you up. And that's going to create another issue. And this is what the AFL is. The AFL is the fucking king of ramifications. So it's like, we're going to protect the head so people start ducking into tackles. Well, now let's make a rule to stop that. You know, so this is what's going to happen. They're going to get players, encourage players to, okay, you can't shape for the bump. You just got to go for your original action where you're going to go for the mark. Get pole axed. Then it's like, well, now we need to protect players from getting poleaxed. So they just the game's going to continue to mutate because the NFL just keeps throwing all these fucking weird shit things in there. And I've said it for about 98 years. I think you need to face sex that sometimes grown athletes of 80 kilos plus running at full pace at one another are sometimes going to unwittingly hurt each other. And, and it's not always like, malicious. I knocked you for a loop when we were running for beer in the fridge before. Why would I be running? That's true. Um, Sam Draper... Fucking hell, that was terrible. I mean, it's, um, th- that was holding the ball every fucking day of the week. You had 98,000 people at the ground who saw it. You had all the commentary saw it, all the players saw it. And yet the uh, the AFL come out and said that it's extremely difficult for the 79 fucking umpires that are standing around to not to see it. It's extremely difficult. Yeah. Oh, it's fucking hell. You, 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 you put more umpires out there to stop this sort of shit from happening, and this sort of shit just keeps happening. It's it's cost now, I think, Adelaide's been shafted two weeks in a row no, with a contentious week. decision, or was it the week before? It wasn't the week before then, was it? Yeah. They won last week, or did yeah, it work they, in their They favor? beat Carlton. Oh, that's all right then. Well, that, yeah. Whatever happened there is perfectly acceptable. The umpires got it all right. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. I mean, that, and again, Matthew Lloyd, this is what I like him, because he just... He just shoots straight. And he was the one who said, the umpires just didn't have the courage to pay it. Which is, it's the fucking ridiculous thing. Because it's in front of a goal, you don't want to, the umpire doesn't want to be seen as the one, oh, look, I'm contributing to the victory and that sort of shit. I'm not going to pay it, even though it's a fucking free kick. Well, either way, you're contributing to a victory. But you've either ensured be, one side's yeah. won, or you've robbed the other side from um, but he's probably the, looking, the, the opportunity to win. Probably, There's no guarantee he was going to kick it. No, nah, but he's probably looking at the lack of a decision that might not be highlighted to that extent. But it was so. I I've always said like if I'm praying, it's it's weak as piss because all these qualifications on it, these things would take a brave umpire to pay that. Um, they would have paid it if it was upfield, or they're not paying because in front of goal. So what the rule changes depending on where you are in the fucking field. That they've put the whistle away. What a fucking ridiculous qualification! Why isn't the game umpired the same the whole game rather than hey, there's five minutes left, it's close. I'm not going to pay free kicks anymore. This is what's wrong with the AFL and their umpiring fraternity. They need to say to the umpires, you're paying these frees wherever they are, whenever they are, minute one, minute 100, you're fucking paying them. And if you don't, you'll be dropped. And they don't do it because, again, they're a weak organisation. Well, it's like that old saying, uh, excuses are like arseholes. Everyone knows Mark Robinson. <laughs> yeah, that is what they... Is that the moon? <laughs> um, um, Essendon, Anzac Day. You know, just going back though for a second... 
I was probably glad they won, um, got that contentious decision, because I reckon that'll losing a close one like that probably motivates you a bit more the following week, and that was what I was thinking at the time, that well, I'm probably glad they won, that they, they're not going to come out super um, hard against us because they, they got shafted the previous week. Super hard and shafted, Yeah, huh? well, it's, it's, um, there's volume, uh, <laughs> volume 2 to 87 of that series. You should watch it one minute. Uh, let me ask you something. Put Again? You on, yeah, put you on the spot. What's been your favourite Anzac Day win? Or what's your best three? Or actually, they started in 95, so let's put your 28 in order. Now, in, order give, of, in order of Murphy. Give me your best three. Um, I mean, I got them in my head. The one in the rain, the, the one O2. where... Yeah, it was O2, was it? The one where um, Bucks is celebrating like he's just O2. kicked there. Yeah. It actually wasn't a goal. That was a great game. Um, the one when we were about 40-odd points down at the first Sorry, quarter let me go and back came to, back. So the O2 one, particularly for our younger listeners, because I know we have so many of them, that was after we'd been shit for seven years mm. and we're starting to come up and that was, and Essendon were premiers in 2000, grand finals in 2001 and O2 beating them in the rain was like saying, yeah, we fucking finally made it. And that was like the start of our little run. Yep, sorry, go. We were seven goals down. That's one I have and, and um, Swan kicked four goals, mm. kicked that nice one where he fucking outran Hooker. The one that always stands out, I don't know, we, I think we won this one, but the one where... Um, <laughs> no. That's Steve, encouraging. One where Steve McKee busted Peveril's arm. That's still O2. Was it still yeah. O2? Yeah. And that was the one where Scotty Cummings had the greatest statless game of all yeah. time. That That's fucking it. game had everything. Yeah. Um, gee, I'm struggling to think of a third one. What's your third one? I'll just agree with yours. Oh, the, so the one with seven goals down, I'd put there. Yeah. I wouldn't put O2 very in my top three. I'd probably put it like four or five. I did enjoy that game, though. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, 2 12 with Blair kicking the winner in the last about minute. With the long kick and the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it wasn't a great game or anything, but fuck, two oh nine Zara has kicked that goal, and they just kept replaying that, and the fucking did my head in. And then when Blair did that, it was like they're gonna replay this now. <laughs> so that one I just really liked from that sense. Uh, probably my favorite was last year, twenty eight po- points down, last quarter, come back, Nick Dagos kicks two. And we overrun them. I'll have to watch that, rewatch that one. And that was a real enjoyable game. You know, I don't think it was like... One of the things on the McRae is going to sound like a really big criticism, but there's a lot of games where they're not really particularly great games and we don't particularly play well, except for about the last 20 minutes when we run over someone. Um, and that was like the Anzac day. Like they, you know, they, I think we were okay in the first quarter and then they sort of bullied us for the next two quarters and it looked like, oh, fuck, they're going to win this. And that last quarter, we just switched it on. And we just went bang, 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 you know. And bloody Nick got those two goals. Um, side bottom kicked the sealer. You know, so that one's probably actually my favourite. Mm. So that would probably be my top three. And then that 0-2-1 would be another one. Would be probably number four or five. So the first one's always is, is marked as a beauty, but I, I wasn't there. Um, it's a fucking draw. How do you fucking mark yeah, it? Yeah, I, I think it's just because of the first one. And the I remember the thing is, it's sort of it's, it's where you were is what you remember. And I was at the the, the my goodbye good bargain warehouse or whatever the fuck it was. I've been dragged there at the time, and um, there was a hi fi sort of section. And um, while the uh, good lady partner at the time was um, off doing whatever she was looking for. Um, I milled around that area with a bunch of other blokes and we all stood around and, and listened to about half of the game on the on the radio. And it was just one of those really good camaraderie type moments. Um, you, know, you didn't see a second of the game, but you were listened to it and then the tension at the end, everything. I just I just remember that always stuck out, even though, you know, it was, as you said, it was a draw. It was, uh, yeah. I mean, another one I, I like, and it wasn't a close game, was 08 when Murderers kicked eight. And that was just an enjoyable yeah, game. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, there's another one. It was 2000 when... Um, when Tarrant took that big screamer, it was against Hessen, and that was there. He took the one against Melbourne that year. Took one against Melbourne, but there wasn't there a big Anzac Day one he took. No, <laughs> maybe then that's why it's not a highlight. Yeah, I'm sure he did. No, you're drinking. Um, probably enough one for you was the one when Mason Cox kicked the first goal against yeah. Essendon's oh, yeah. under sixteen. That, that was a nice little collect that day. That was the year that they had the half the list banned for um, the supplement scandal for, for not taking drugs. Yeah, um, so. And it was probably not a great game, but just in terms of the context of the season, 2018, with um, when we we beat him pretty comfortably, and I remember we were sitting there watching that, and 
Essendon just couldn't find a way out of the fence so many times because we just zoned it in. But it was like the first time you really felt under Buckley's coaching that we were actually had a good system going and we're going to do okay. I mean, we beat him under Buckley's, I think... I think we lost 13 or something. We, we won a fair few under Buckley. Um, but the 18 was the first time I felt like, okay, that's actually evidence that we're going to be a good side this year. When you have that one under Buckley where Seedsman won the Anzac Day medal, um, and then there was a couple sort of games where you just, they just sort of, um, some of them have just been pretty so so games. Mm-hmm. And then there was, I think, 06 we won. But like those would be my best. Last year's. The, the Blair goal and that one where we were seven goals down, you know, because they were, they were seven goals to zip and they just looked fucked and we just chipped away, chipped away and they just couldn't score after that. Mm. So really enjoyed that. I'd like a really nice, you know, breezy game this time around. Wouldn't now, it be good? What do you think of Essendon? Um, what are they? They're four and two. They're, 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 that much. Yeah, they're in the eight. Um, but who have they beaten? They obviously... Adelaide. They, they beat Adelaide. St Kilda. So yeah, no one, no one big though. They've been pretty ordinary in the games they've lost. I don't really fucking care enough about them to watch them. Yeah, they're an interesting side. I mean, they got some talented players, but on the flip side, who was the one that they had that really? Oh, Port smashed them. So Port smashed them by like oh, twelve true. goals, and we smashed Port by seven goals. So we should win by sixteen goals. Well, that's it. Yeah, so sure, that makes sense. It's hard to fault your maths. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, they're, they're an interesting one too, because I, I think, I didn't watch the all game against Adelaide, but I thought, Essendon probably should have won by four or five goals. Uh, they were just really inaccurate. And there was times Essendon really controlled the ball, where it just like, you know, I can't even see Adelaide getting a shot at goal. So they got, um, Goldstein, I think, coming back in. No, he played last week, Did he was really good, yeah. No, he's coming back in though. No, no, you think about Peter Wright's coming back in. Well, I know him, I'm sure I heard somewhere, someone, uh, something I was listening to saying he's... He's back in. But that's how much I didn't pay attention to him last. I don't remember seeing him out there. All I remember is uh, the dive and draper. Yeah. The drape dive. So. Um, yeah, I'd, uh, well, they'll, they'll be going pretty tall then with, with those three. The draper does play a bit of forward from time to time. No, no, he's he? terrible. He's, he can mark, but he can't kick. No, oh, that's all right. Um, Let him mark all he wants. Then. I think they're likely to drop one of them. Hmm. And it won't be right because he's the genuine forward. So I think... Uh, what's his name? Goldstein has been the better ruckman, so I think Draper will be one. Yeah. See you later, Draper. But Soldo was leading Taps to advantage, uh, as far as I'm aware, or as far as Craig McRae's aware, because I just took this off him. And Cameron smashed him, so you expect Cameron to smash. He's been playing well this year, Cameron. So he's been pretty good. Yeah, I think we should we should comfortably lose this. Really? Yeah, by ten goals. I'd really like the, you know, I'm not expecting a smash but I'd really like to have a relatively comfortable game. The one fear I have is the one I had against Bloody Port, even though it was seven goals up, it was like, I still don't feel safe. I feel like they, they we could just implode and be desperately defending rather than winning this comfortably. Um, and I'd like to beat Essendon just by, you know, whether it's just by five goals or whatever, but to actually just have a nice breezy game rather than... It would be good because um, I'll, be I'll be in a box with this game too, so... Uh, You're dying? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, so, well, um, we'll get Dorsker on next week. Well, yeah, will you? Yeah. You can sit here next to this thing. Next to the stats. Um, is that what he does? Who, the dog? He's not fucking writing much. Yeah, well... Um, yeah, no, um, look, I'd be quite confident, I think. All right, see you, Tip. Um, calling by 36. All right, I'll say calling by 35. Uh, Do you know that one of us could be right? Yeah, or well, both of us could be wrong. Yeah. Um, final thoughts? Uh, no, just, um, as you said, I think a, an enjoyable, comfortable lead from the start and never be headed win would be uh, just what the doctor ordered before we face the filth. So let me just pose one final question, like an AFL question. Should North Melbourne be, be, North Melbourne be disbanded? Uh, I think Coburg on the recent showing uh, would be a more competitive side. Yeah. Um, no, fucking North are a disgrace, aren't they? Yeah. That's why I brought up the question. No, uh, fuck them. No, well, fuck them. All right, that's it from us. We'll see you next week later. Toodle, Pipsky. <laughs>